Translation, Second Edition, published October 2007. Hosea, Chapter 1. The Lord gave this message to Hosea, son of Beeroi, during the years when Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah were kings of Judah, and Jeroboam, son of Joash, was king of Israel. Hosea's wife and children. When the Lord first began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, Go and marry a prostitute, so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the Lord and worshipping other gods. So Hosea married Gorma, the daughter of Diblium, and she became pregnant and gave Hosea a son. And the Lord said, Name the child Jezreel, for I am about to punish King Jehu's dynasty to avenge the murders he committed at Jezreel. In fact, I will bring an end to Israel's independence. I will break its military power in the Jezreel Valley. Soon, Gorma became pregnant again and gave birth to a daughter. And the Lord said to Hosea, Name your daughter Lo-Ruhama, not loved, for I will no longer show love to the people of Israel or forgive them, but I will show love to the people of Judah. I will free them from their enemies, not with weapons and armies or horses and chariots, but by my power as the Lord their God. After Gorma had weaned Loruhama, she again became pregnant and gave birth to a second son. And the Lord said, Name him Lo am I, not my people, for Israel is not my people, and I am not their God. Yet the time will come when Israel's people will be like sands of the seashore. Too many to count. Then at the place where they were told, You are not my people, it will be said, You are children of the living God. Then the people of Judah and Israel will unite together. They will choose one leader for themselves, and they will return from exile together. What a day that will be! The day of Jezreel, when God will again plant his people in his land. In that day, you will call your brothers Am I, my people, and you will call your sister Ruhama, the ones I love. Chapter 2 Charges Against an Unfaithful Wife but now bring charges against Israel, your mother, for she's no longer my wife and I am no longer her husband. Tell her to remove the prostitute makeup from her face and the clothing that exposes her breasts. Otherwise, I will strip her as naked as she was on the day she was born. I will leave her to die of thirst, as in a dry and barren wilderness. And I will not love her children, for they were conceived in prostitution. Their mother is a shameless prostitute and became pregnant in a shameful way. She said, I'll run after other lovers and sell myself to them for food and water for clothing of wool and linen, and for olive oil and drinks. For this reason, 
I will fence her in with thorn bushes. I will block her path with a wall to make her lose her way. When she runs after her lovers, she won't be able to catch them. She will search for them, but not find them. Then she will think, I might as well return to my husband, for I was better off with him than I am now. She doesn't realise it was I who gave her everything she has. The grain, the new wine, the olive oil. I even gave her silver and gold, but she gave all my gifts to Bell. No one will be able to rescue her from my hands. I will put an end to her annual festivals her new moon celebrations and her Sabbath days, all her appointed festivals. I will destroy her grapevines and fig trees, things she claims her lovers gave her. I will let them grow into tangled thickets where only wild animals will eat the fruit. I will punish her for all those times when she burned incense to her images of Baal. When she put on her earrings and jewels and went out to look for her lovers, but forgot about me, says the Lord. The Lord's love for unfaithful Israel. But then I will win her back once again. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her there. I will return her vineyards to her and transfer the Valley of Trouble into a gateway of hope. She will give herself to me there as she did long ago when she was young, when I freed her from her captivity in Egypt. When that day comes, says the Lord, you will call me my husband instead of my master. O oh, Israel, I will wipe the many names of Baal from your lips and you will never mention them again. On that day, I will make a covenant with all the wild animals and the birds of the sky and the animals that scurry along the ground so they will not harm you. I will remove all your weapons of war from the land, all the swords and bows, so you can live unafraid, in peace and safety. I will make you my wife forever, showing you righteousness and justice, unfailing love and compassion. I will be faithful to you and make you mine, and you will finally know me as the Lord. In that day, I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the sky as it pleads for clouds, and the sky will answer the earth with rain. Then the earth will answer the thirsty cries of the grain, the grapevines, and the olive trees. And they in turn will answer, Jezreel, God plants. At that time, I will plant a crop of Israelites and raise them for myself. I will show love to those I called not loved, and to those I called not my people. I will say, now you are my people, and they will reply, you are our God. Chapter 3 Hosea's wife is redeemed. Then the Lord said to me, Go and love your wife again, even though she commits adultery with another lover. This will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel, even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. So I bought her back for 15 pieces of silver and five bushels of barley and a measure of wine. 
Then I said to her, you must live in my house for many days and stop your prostitution. During this time, you will not have sexual relations with anyone, not even me. This shows that Israel will go a long time without a king or prince and without sacrifices, sacred pillars, priests or even idols. But afterwards, the people will return and devote themselves to the Lord their God and to David's descendant, their king. In the last days, they will tremble in awe of the Lord and of his goodness. Chapter 4 The Lord's Case Against Israel Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Israel. The Lord has brought charges against you, saying, There is no faithfulness, no kindness, no knowledge of God in your land. You make vows and break them, and you kill and steal and commit adultery. There is violence everywhere, one murder after another. That is why your land is mourning and everyone is wasting away. Even the wild animals and the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea are disappearing. Don't point your finger at somebody else and try to pass the blame. My complaint, you priests, is with you. So you will stumble in broad daylight and your false prophets will fall with you in the night. I will destroy Israel, your mother. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. The more priests there are, the more they sin against me. They have exchanged the glory of God for the shame of idols. When the people bring their sin offerings, the priests get fed. So the priests are glad when the people sin. And what the priests do... The people also do. So now I will punish both priests and people for their wicked deeds. They will eat and still be hungry. They will play the prostitute and gain nothing from it. For they have deserted the Lord to worship other gods. Wine has robbed my people of their understanding. They ask a piece of wood for advice. They think a stick can tell them the future. Longing for idols has made them foolish. They have played the prostitute, serving other gods and deserting their god. They offer sacrifices to idols on the mountain tops. They go up into the hills to burn incense in the pleasant shade of oaks, poplars and terebinth trees. That is why your daughter turned to prostitution and your daughter-in-law committed adultery. But why should I punish them for their prostitution and adultery? For your men are doing the same thing. Sinning with whores and shrine prostitutes. Oh, foolish people, you refuse to understand, so you will be destroyed. Though you, Israel, are a prostitute, may Judah avoid such guilt. Do not join the false worship at Gilgal or Beth Haven even though they take oaths there in the Lord's name. Israel is stubborn, like a stubborn heifer. 
So should the Lord feed her like a lamb in a lush pasta? Leave Israel alone because she is married to idolatry. When the rulers of Israel finish their drinking, off they go to find some prostitutes. They love shame more than honour. So a mighty wind will sweep them away. Their sacrifices to idols will bring them shame. Chapter 5 The Failure of Israel's Leaders Hear this, you priests. Pay attention, you leaders of Israel. Listen, you members of the royal family. Judgment has been handed down against you. For you have led the people into a snare by worshipping the idols of Mizpah and Tabor. You have dug a deep pit to trap them at Acacia Grove. But I will settle with you for what you have done. I know what you are like, O Ephraim. You cannot hide from me, O Israel. You have left me as a prostitute leaves her husband. You are utterly defiled. Your deeds won't let you return to your God. You are a prostitute through and through. And you do not know the Lord. The arrogance of Israel testifies against her. Israel and Ephraim will stumble under their load of guilt. Judah too will fall with them. When they come with their flocks and herds to offer sacrifices to the Lord, they will not find him because he has withdrawn from them. They have betrayed the honour of the Lord, bearing children that are not his. Now their false religion will devour them, along with their wealth. Sound the alarm in Gibeah. Blow the trumpet in Ramah. Raise the battle cry in Beth Avon. Lead on into battle, O warriors of Benjamin. One thing is certain, Israel. On the day of punishment, you will become a heap of rubble. The leaders of Judah have become like thieves, so I will pour my anger on them like a waterfall. The people of Israel will be crushed and broken by my judgment because they are determined to worship idols. I will destroy Israel as a moth consumes wool. I will make Judah as weak as rotten wood. When Israel and Judah saw how sick they were, Israel turned to Assyria, to the great king there. But he could not either help nor cure them. I will be like a lion of Israel, like a strong young lion of Judah. I will tear them to pieces. I will carry them off. And no one will be left to rescue them. Then I will return to my place until they admit their guilt and turn to me. For as soon as trouble comes, they will earnestly search for me.